Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper. This is Takedown, your weekly source for what's trending in the world of amateur wrestling. We start this week with the highly anticipated battle between the number one ranked Penn State and fifth ranked Lehigh. The Nittany Lions arrived in Allentown on a 34 dual win streak, but would have to find a way to 35 without two of their starters. Meanwhile, the Mountain Hawks have been the biggest surprise of the early season, defeating Big Ten power Michigan just two weeks ago. Lehigh took a 15-point lead after just three bouts, but four straight victories in the upper weights gave PSU its fourth victory of the year. It was a good effort. Um, we were in position to win, and I think, you know, when it came down to their hitting their horses at the end, we knew we had to steal one from one of their big guys. We were close, um, but we got we, we really need to, to pin that down. We have to be able to close out, and I thought our guys competed really hard. They really did. Um, it's going to sting for a little bit, but we got to create more opportunities late in the match to get those takedowns. You know, we had them on the ropes there, and, and um, you know, especially me being a senior, you don't get a lot of opportunities like this. Um, I'm just very proud of my team, you know. Um, we put in work day in, day out for opportunities like this, and for us to be this close, um, you know, it, it definitely shot to the heart, but, you know, it, it definitely just good coming off of it definitely shows that, you know, we're ready to compete with the best guys, and, and um, if it does, this doesn't boost our confidence, I don't know uh, what's going to. They did exactly what we needed them to do. We needed bonus points. We knew we needed bonus points early. Uh, they went out and they got them, uh, and then Luke went out and beat a really good kid. So we were, in, we were in a good position, you know, being up at the break, that was a, we knew that was a good spot. We felt comfortable at 65, and then we, we really thought we were going to steal a couple of those in the last four, and we, you know, we came up short. But, no, it's we got to get better, and we know we have to get better, and these guys will work hard to get better. I mean, it's a trend. I mean, we all grew up together, so, like, we, we're, just, we're just falling in suit with uh, um, just getting stuff done. Um, you know, and like I said, I've been in this opportunity and this situation plenty of times, so, you know, I, I know I know what's expected, so, you know, I just want to set the tone for these younger guys. And, you know, Luke being a freshman, he's a baller. He's going to be so good. His ceiling is limitless. Um, same with Scotty. So it was it was cool going out there and, and lighting the crowd up because that was, that was an awesome environment. Um, you know, um, I'm just glad I had the opportunity to do that. That was the coolest thing I've been a part of, you know, since Nationals, and, and it's hard to top that. Um, uh, the elevated mat, um, the lights, uh, you know, Lehigh did it up for this, and it was so cool going out there. I mean, I mean, uh, we were all smiling, like, kind of like nerds out there, like, walking out, and we, we couldn't stop smiling. Like, we were trying to act really tough. You know, it's a wrestling match, but uh, we were just smiling so hard because it was so cool. Like, we were kind of overwhelmed with it. Um, but, yeah, it, it's good see, letting these younger guys kind of feel that and see that because it does compare to the NCAA tournament, and, and if you can compete here, you know, you can compete anywhere. It's all in preparation for March, and we always talk about it, eyes on March, and um, we saw some good things. We saw a lot of things we have to continue to work on. Um, we, we, we just have to get better. I mean, I, I know I say it every week, but we really do, and I, I think we will. I think they've gotten better from last week to this. We got better from Friday night to tonight. We just got to continue to improve. We, you can always learn from wins and losses, um, whether it's a team or individual. Um, you know, we, we got we to get after it uh, a lot earlier. Um, we can't let, you know, the ref decide last second um, scoring opportunities. We got to start earlier just so we can put more pressure on the guy and, and, and create more opportunities. That's something we're going to work on and you know we, we don't have any rollovers with Penn and Drexler. We got two really, really tough teams so um, I'm excited how the, how the team uh, bounces back. Those are going to be two battles next Sunday. I mean uh, we got to rest up here for the next couple days uh, but we got two big ones. Uh, they, you know Penn and Drexel, they both have really nice teams. That's going to be great matches just like tonight and come down to the wire. We just got to make ourselves a little more aggressive early. We'll take you through some other top 25 battles. That's after the break. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to Casey's General Store. Stay tuned. Presenting Casey's Pizza to Pump Payoff, where the more you buy, the more you save. Add your pocket by saving 10 cents per gallon for each large Casey's pizza you purchase. Two pizzas saves you 20 cents. Three pizzas, 30 cents. The savings keep piling up. This month, dessert's on us. Get a pre-order of Casey's Chow with the purchase of any large made-from-scratch pizza. Casey's, famous for pizza. I'm Don Beneveni, Beneveni Chevrolet and Granger. We recently made the switch to uh, LED lighting. Uh, we purchased it from uh, Yellow Blue. 
Uh, we've had a very good experience. The lighting has saved us approximately $1,000 a month. I made the switch to yellow blue LED lighting, and you should too. All right, welcome back. Takedown continues, this time in Iowa City. That's where the Fighting Illini pushed the seventh-ranked Hawkeyes to the brink of defeat on Friday night. Iowa trailed the entire duel, dropping the first three bouts before Brandon Sorensen put the black and gold on the board with a 4-1 victory over Eric Barone. Michael Kemmerer followed with a 4-1 decision of his own, using a takedown and riding time to defeat Kyle Legendorfer at 157. Illinois would go on to win two of the next three, including an amazing 23-8 tech fall by Isaiah Martinez. With Iowa down eight, Cash Wilkie came through in the clutch, hitting an overtime takedown to edge out Andre Lee 3-1 at 157. 97. Now trailing only by five, the Hawkeyes needed a pin to win, and their seventh-ranked heavyweight delivered. We knew this was going to be a season like this. And because of the personnel we're putting in our lineup, you're giving up nine first period takedowns and getting one, um, you're gonna really struggle because we knew this was gonna be unique this year, um, but we did not fight. And when you have guys that, you know, they might be off the radar a little bit, you know, we got, you know, people point out that, you know, particularly he's a walk on at 125. Well, when you got a walk on, you know, you got to fight, and you got to just, it's got to be more about just getting that one takedown to kind of get yourself back in the match. Key word there is kind of, and when you start to get to a guy, you got to keep putting it on him. Those guys were athletic, um, and, they, and points were hard to come by, but that is not, um, not where we should be struggling, and we, we know that we got work to do. Brian Smith and the six-ranked Tigers opened their conference schedule with a 33-point victory over Old Dominion. Missouri won nine straight inside the Hearn Center, while Grant Leith, Daniel Lewis, and Austin Myers each tacked on bonus points for the Tigers. Ernst, wrestling hard, transitioning to different moves, trying to do a pass by, and he's going to get a takedown, it looks like, here on the edge of the mat. Ernst being relentless on top. Richardson with the attempt at a Grammy, but great defense, or great, well, yeah, defense from the top position yeah, for yeah. Ernesty. He's gonna walk away with three three points, four with riding time with a win over. And not an impressive win score-wise, I'd say, for Ernesty, but Richardson really didn't open up a whole lot for him. Great job by Ernesty to adjust in the situations. And at 149, we're gonna have Grant Leith for the Tigers, who's been on a roll lately. And you can see Carter's kind of trying to build up fight risk wow oh nice and Carter tried there to, by Lee tried to sit out and spin out but Leith's gonna take him back and looking for the fall here let's see if Grant Leith can get it Carter's doing a great Carter's job of defending hard and Lee's definitely he's gonna get the fall Grant Leith at 149 pounds for your Missouri Tigers is gonna get a fall over Keenan Carter Leith kind of just melts him into that Carter <laughs> stepped back and it was all over there for him yeah and Lewis knows he has the near fall I mean he went back for the fall right there also built up a minute of riding time there while he was working There's that tilt. There's going to be four points of near fall. Looks like Lewis is just going to go ahead and him down look there. for the two. Great transition wrestling to get the take going to go ahead and be the, the match fall. for Daniel Lewis. Daniel Lewis is going to win 15-0 to zero tech fall over Selden Wright. It's going to end up being 16-0 with the riding point. And that's going to be the end of the duel for the Missouri Tigers as Austin Myers gets the win here.
The final team score is going to be 32 to 3. The dominant Tigers victory today puts them over Old Dominion and pushes them to 7 0 in the season and 1 0 in conference. The Tigers stay right here at Hearn Center as they take on the Ohio Bobcats December 10th. For the Mizzou Network, I'm Logan Ball. Thomas Haynes needed just 43 seconds to seal one of the biggest victories in Lock Haven history Friday night. LHU took 5 of 10 over the 11th ranked Rutgers, winning 4 by way of bonus points to power the Eagles to their first top 25 win in nearly 12 years. Nick Siriano and Scott Del Vecchio gave the Scarlet Knights an early lead, but a major decision by Kyle Shoup and a 5-1 upset by Ronnie Perry tied the score at 7. The Eagles took a 9-point lead with back-to-back -back bonus point victories at 57 and 60 but Rutgers came clawing back with wins from Joe Grello, Jordan Pagano, and Nick Ravina. Now with the score tied at 16, Lockhaven heavyweight Thomas Haynes sealed the 22-16 upset with a pin. Talk about a statement, just 43 seconds into the first. In Big Ten action, Northwestern stormed past Maryland in the team's home opener on Saturday. Sebastian Rivera gave NU an early six-point advantage with a fall at 125. And seventh-ranked Ryan Deacon won his team high, 10th bout of the year, pinning Adam Whitesell in the second period at 49. Johnny Sebastian gave Northwestern his third pin of the day at 74. While Mitch Sliga and Zach Chaconis made it three straight bonus point victories at 84 and 97. In the lone match between rank wrestlers, Maryland heavyweight Yusuf Hamida picked up a third period fall over Conan Jennings, but the Wildcats still won big, 34 12. That's the final from Evanston. Let's go back to the East Coast. Roger Reyna and the Quakers nearly pulled off the upset over 22nd ranked Ryder on Friday night. The Bronx got off to a strong start as J.R. Wirt secured a 13 5 decision at 125. After a loss at 33, Tyson Dippery, B.J. Claggan, Chad, and Dean Sherry each won by decision to put Ryder up by seven. Penn would not go down without a fight, however, winning back-to-back -back bouts at 84 and 97. That set up a winner-take-all match again at heavyweight. That's the story this week. It was all Bronx at 285 as Ryan Cloud picked up a 10-4 decision over Patrick Guerin, giving Ryder the road victory 19-15. That's the final from Philly. All right, check this out on our way to break. It's Minnesota head coach Brandon Agam as Ron Burgundy from Anchorman. We'll be back. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to McBride Mats. 1001, 1002. Hey, coach, you ready for coach's call? Oh, oh, Mr. Shrupp. I wasn't expecting company. I just was finishing up my workout here. Tuesday's uh, arms and arms and Day. Oh, you asked me to come by. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's uh, Tuesday, a, uh, and we deep, normally uh, do coach's corner. Burn here from my uh, tortilla all the way down to my cattywampus here. It's it's boring, but, but that's my life, so. Well, that's that's great, bud. Can we get this rolling? I'm, I'm pretty busy, so. Oh, believe you me, I too am busy, but uh, I suppose these, uh, these guns can take a break, so you can do your little... Uh, Beep, beep, zoom in, zoom out video thingy here, I guess. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookie. What's up guys, I want to tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, 
It all has bacteria floating around. They all have viruses floating around. They all have fungus floating around. And the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind of, um, any kind of wounds that are gonna turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with a amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin. Stay pure, stay clean, check them out. Pureandcleansports.com. Presenting Casey's Pizza to Pump Payoff. Where the more you buy, the more you save. Pad your pocket by saving 10 cents per gallon for each large Casey's pizza you purchase. Two pizzas saves you 20 cents. Three pizzas, 30 cents. The savings keep piling up. This month, dessert's on us. Get a pre-order of Casey's Chow with the purchase of any large made-from-scratch pizza. Casey's, famous for pizza. Well, after nearly nine years, 18 wins and two world titles, a sometimes controversial one, Ben Askren has announced his retirement from mixed martial arts. Askren capped off an undefeated career by stopping Shinye Aoki in under a minute at 1FC 65. At just 34 years old, the former Olympian has plenty of options, but there's still one fight that could bring him back into the cage. The funky one joined us on Takedown Radio last weekend to talk about his future plans and a possible mega fight with George St. Pierre. How, do, how does the guy of your caliber, I mean, you're a very, very uh, accomplished athlete, but how do you know it's time to retire uh, from fighting? Well, it's pretty easy, actually. It's the one thing, um, actually, I take it back. It's not easy, Scott. Uh, <laughs> but the one thing I did was re reading books about all athletes growing up. That was my favorite thing to do. That was my passion. I, you know, everything, baseball, football, basketball, soccer, you pick it, I read it, right? Right. And the one thing you you, you kind of read at, about everybody is that everybody stays too long and everyone spends too much of their money. And so that was when I when I got into my athletic career, I said, don't stay too long, don't spend too much money. And that was kind of what guided So when I re-signed my contract with one championship and at the end of 2015, um, I said that, okay, I'm I'm – I'm done. At the end of 2017, I'm done. And, you know, I feel like you have to put, uh, like, a very strict boundary there because if you don't, you're never that much worse than you were a month ago or two months ago, right? But then over the course of time, it can really add up. Skill-wise, I'm still getting better, right? But physically, I feel like I've been on kind of the, the downswing for a few years right now. I just can't. I can't train with nearly the intensity that I used to train with. I used to train like a madman, and now, <laughs> like, dude, I'm feeling like a madman. I'll feel, I'll feel it the next day for sure. Um, and so it, it's a weird conundrum because I feel like skill wise I'm getting better, but physically I'm getting worse. And so I think I'm right at that, that kind of that midpoint where, um, you know, I'm still at the top of my game, but man, if I stick around much longer, it's just, it's just really hard to get through. Um, training camps with the high intensity and working hard these days. My one stipulation in my retirement was that if I if I got to fight the number one guy in my weight class, then I, I would make a comeback for that one one fight. Um, but it's interesting because at my weight class, obviously Tyron Woodley is number one, and we're close friends, and I don't really have any desire to fight Tyron. And so, but then there's also GSP, who has been primarily a welterweight his entire career, and now obviously moved up and won the middleweight belt. And so, you know, I figured, hey, why not try to go get a shot at him? Um, you know, he, he hasn't really called out Tyron or uh, Robert Whitaker, who would be the two obvious matches for him. So he's kind of in this limbo. He doesn't know where he wants to go. So I said, hey, you don't know where you want to go. I, I'm as good of an option as anybody. Let's do this. National champion Nathan Tomasello joins us live right after the break. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to Nike Wrestling. for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built.
All right, welcome back. Today we've got a very special guest in the Nike hot seat, three-time All-American. He'll be gunning for his second national title this year. Live from the Ohio State Wrestling Office, we're joined by Nathan Tomasello. Welcome back, Nathan. How are you? Good. Good to be here. A Big Ten champ at 33 just last year. Uh, you defeated Corey Clark of the University of Iowa in the Big Ten Finals 5-4. Uh, and then there was uh, a bit of a what I call a preseason injury that you had to deal with. I'm not going to get into the injury itself, but how are you doing today? Uh, are you injury free? Are you medically cleared? Are you physically fit and morally sound? Yeah, I feel great. Um, did a lot of rehab the last seven weeks now and back on the mats, wrestling and drilling and feel, feel like I'm healed and everything feels good right now. And so now I'm just waiting on the doctors to, doctor and our trainer to clear me to start competing again but i feel like in the next couple of weeks i'll be ready to uh get on the mats so i'm i'm very excited mentally i'm i'm in a great place and physically i'm a good place right now and just just uh excited to get back on the mats and finish uh my senior season and we'll really just basically get it started and then finish it out in cleveland uh come march you you realize, I think you do, uh, how truly important you are to the structure of that team and, and its eventual uh, success. I think Ohio State has a real good chance of winning an NCAA title this year. Do you? Yeah, I believe we have a great chance. I uh, I know how important it is to have, to have every guy clicking and wrestling at their best at nationals. And so I just want to be that leader that starts off the team and gets the momentum going. Um, just like I did the last few years, especially this year. It's my last year, and uh, and uh, I just I want to give all that I have, and I believe that for us to win it, I uh, I need to compete very well, and so I'm excited for that challenge, and uh, I'm just uh, just just hungry, hungry to 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 go out and just control and and uh, rest of my match. You know, let's talk a little bit about the pin chain that's been all over Twitter. It's been all over Facebook, et cetera. Talk to us about the pin chain. What do you know about it? Who started it? And uh, and, and quite frankly, do you want to wear the chain? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jaggers or co or coach Jaggers uh, originally thought thought of the idea after watching the Miami football play. They have what they have a take um, a turnover t chain which they, they put on a player once uh, they got an interception or a fumble recovery or something like that. And so we he thought it would be a great idea for us to to uh, to put that into our wrestling if we get a pin, be able to put that on our, on our, around our neck and to wear it after just to cool down after a big – after a pin in one of the dual meets or one of the matches. And, and I think that's really helpful because – uh, we need as much bonus points as we can get, especially when we're we're going to be facing Penn State and a few other really good schools come the, the national tournament. And so, I definitely want to get that that be in that club and get the chain around my neck. So, that's uh, that's definitely a big goal of mine. All right, so we're we're expecting to see you back on the mat in action in as little as two to three weeks. But after that, really, the cap is off the basket, right? I mean, you're you're going lights out. Right. Yeah. If uh, the the original plan was beginning of January, that would probably be the, the latest when I'll return, either the first or second weekend of January. Uh, if not, I'm hoping to be back beginning to middle of December before Christmas. So Nathan Tomasello has been our guest in the Nike hot seat today in this very special edition and very special interview. I, I might add, I truly enjoy interviewing Nathan uh, for a lot of reasons, but um Nathan, we appreciate you taking the time to join us today. As always, it's a real pleasure to talk to you. Cannot, literally, cannot wait to see you back in action. Thanks, Scott. I appreciate it. That'll do it for this week's show. Special thanks to our friends at Iowa, Ohio State, and Lehigh, and Nathan Tomasello. Don't forget to check us out online for all the breaking wrestling news, along with weekly prizes and the longest-running radio show in our sport. It's available anytime, free, at TakedownWrestle.com. From our studios in Des Moines, Iowa, I'm Scott Kester. We'll see you next week for another new edition of Takedown 